Hello, good morning. I'm Indra Dharaka from the Department of Electrical Engineering, University of Maratua. Our project is locating faults of medium voltage overhead lines by monitoring the magnetic field vector. Our group members are Lahir Sudharaka, Gihar Vikramatunga, and myself. During this presentation, I'm going to discuss the following topics. The strong reliable grids are the bedrock of modern society, but power systems can be subjected to disturbances at any time, anywhere. So it is very important to identify the fault location to take immediate actions. This has been addressed in different ways in the literature review. In the impedance-based method, the impedance seen by two ends of the faulty line is calculated and the fault location is identified based on the impedance profile of the line. The traveling wave method basically relies on the time taken by the faulty wave to reach the fault detectors. Due to increased electrification, there's a high necessity of clearing faults as soon as possible to minimize the impact on customers. So in this project, we are presenting a new efficient method to identify the faults in three-phase medium voltage overhead lines using the magnetic field vector. So when we move to our objectives, our main objectives are to identify any faulty condition in medium voltage overhead lines and localize it accurately so as to minimize the restoration time. This is the overall structure of our proposed system. It shows where our sensors are placed and how data is circulated. The fault detection algorithm is executed in each sensor node and when it detects a faulty condition, the captured fault data is transmitted to the main server. There, the fault localization process is taken place and informed to relevant authorities via web application or SMS. Let me explain finalized algorithms in coming up slides. For the clarity of understanding purposes, I'm going to demonstrate our methodology using this example fault condition. Here, the fault has occurred between the sensor node 0 and sensor node 1. Let's first discuss how this fault is captured by the sensors. In our methodology, first we confirmed the positioning of Hall effect sensors such that each sensor node is having two Hall effect sensors which are placed perpendicularly to each other in a horizontal plane. The figure shows a visual image of the sensor placement on a distribution line pole. Here is the finalized fault detection algorithm which is used to capture the fault. This algorithm is totally our own creation and it is developed based on our experiments and observations. As a part of this project, we developed a MATLAB simulink model for Hall effect sensor, which is not readily available in the MATLAB library. Another key feature in our solution is the development of dynamic threshold function, which has self-defined threshold value. This makes our system more reliable and smarter. Let's go through each step of this algorithm. Okay, so theoretically, this sensor outputs a sinusoidal wave, which is related to the magnetic flux density. But in practical scenario, during the AOD conversion, it captures the sinusoidal signal together with its sensor noise component. We considered this noise effect by adding white Gaussian noise with the signal to noise ratio of 12.5 decibels into our simulation. Then we send this data feed through a low pass filter to minimize the noise effect. As it is not practical to achieve 100% noise filtration, we have further improved our algorithm to minimize the noise effect from the remaining noise component and enhance the reliability of the system performance. Then we send this data set through a two, two cascade RMS functions. They have fundamental frequency of 50 Hertz. Here, our intention is to minimize the oscillations of the signal to make it convenient for decision-making and data extraction. After that, we take its discrete derivation to neglect any steady-state condition as we are concerned about the sudden variations in the current flow at any fault. Next, we send this data feed 
through a dynamic threshold block. This function is developed such that it can identify the variations of the incoming signal to determine whether it is a noise or a faulty condition. As I mentioned earlier, it uses a dynamic threshold value defined by itself. Once it detects a faulty condition, the signal is released to go through the final RMS block, which provides a smooth positive sided signal for data extraction. Here, it starts processing incoming data feed to find out its peak value. It is carried out for a given period of time, which depends on the line protection device settings. This peak value will be sent to the central server with corresponding sense ID. Now, the forward locating algorithm is <coughs> executed <coughs> using the peak values received from the old sensors. It subtracts peak values from the adjacent sensor nodes and identifies which adjacent sensor nodes have the highest variation in their peak values. These sensor nodes are determined as the boundaries of the fault. Now, it is possible to identify the GPS coordinates of the fault boundaries using the given database of sense IDs with their installed location data. <clears throat> this is the single line diagram of our modeled 11KV distribution line. We used this system to conduct our experiments and develop algorithms discussed early. This is an actual representation of LECO distribution network with actual line parameters of six kilometers long 11KV distribution line at Dalupitiya substation. We have validated our model against the actual response of LECO feeder under various types of faults with same fault impedance at the same distance from the substation. Moving to the results, let's consider this line to ground fault with 20 ohms fault impedance. This has been occurred at 750 meters away from the substation. The fault is between sensor node zero and sensor node one. So if you check the legend, this plot shows a noticeable variation between the waveforms of sensor node zero and one in white and yellow colors. Therefore, it is clear that the highest peak value difference exists between the waveforms of sensor node zero and one. So we can clearly identify node zero and one as the faulty segment. Likewise, we verified accuracy of our algorithm going through various fault types, differing the fault distance from the substation and fault impedance levels. Considering the practical implementation, we have developed data handling procedure in the, in the microcontroller to have a real-time data processing. Here we propose ESP32 microcontroller embedded with free real-time operating system. Further, it is possible to inform the fault location data to relevant authorities through a web platform or SMS. Currently, we are working on this practical implementation with the help of Amit Baba Consultants Private Limited. Under this project, we have newly developed algorithm to locate faults in overhead distribution lines by monitoring the resultant magnetic field vector. It is tested and proven in a simulated environment that our algorithm is independent from fault location, fault type, and fault impedance bounded to a given value. Further, the performance of the model distribution line was validated using a real distribution line data in LECO network. So we believe this project has a greater potential to impact the enhancement of power system reliability. We are grateful to our supervisors, late Professor Ranjit Pereira, Dr. W.D. Prasad, and engineer Rianci Fernando for their guidance and support provided throughout this project. Especially, we would like to commemorate our loving supervisor, late Professor Ranjit Pereira, who laid the foundation on which we developed the whole structure of this project. Thank you.